I wanted to share a little bit more about the mentorship program. Many people um, have said, well, I don't really need to pay for a mentor. Why do I need to pay for a mentor? Well, I'm going to explain the difference and the value in unpaid mentorship and paid mentorship just to give you a broader understanding of what you're getting into or what what you're stepping into should you say yes to this mentorship program and I pray you say yes I pray that you will discern as best as you can God's voice and how he speaks to you and how he deals with you and that you will say yes and then figure it out you know many times many some of the greatest ventures or adventures that I went on with the Holy Spirit, I just said yes. I and didn't I wasn't trying to figure out how to get it done. I just said yes and all God needed was for me to say yes. And when I did that in obedience to his leading, again we're being led by him and not by our own self. And when I did that, then the way, the way maker showed up and made a way and helped me, gave me wisdom and understanding on how that I needed to get things done so I could facilitate the the walking out of me saying yes. So I pray that those who are on the fence, I pray that as you listen to this, you get clarity and understanding and you'll be able to make a commitment. So let's talk about, let's first, I want to define what coaching is, and then I want to define what mentorship is, and then I want to go further into mentorship. One thing, if you know me, I'm very clear and very precise when it comes to defining and, and, and mapping things out, because that is very helpful in ensuring that we're all on the same page and we all have the same understanding and it facilitates that we all are learning at the same tempo and rhythm and pace. So really, uh, I looked up the word coaching because I wanted to give you the definition as it's written out. And what I saw here, I'm going to read to you. It says, coaches use a wide range of communication skills and uh, they help the client to shift their perspectives and thereby develops different approaches to achieve their goals. And really what coaching is all about, coaching is about the client. Any good coach is going to make it about the client. And so what coaches do is what they inspire that person to put forth greater effort, intentional effort to excel into their goals. And so what a coach does is they come in, they see the potential and they help that person to unlock their potential to develop develop their skill sets, to change their attitude so that they can get the most out of their performance, the most out of that certain area, and the most out of their life. Mentoring is a process for the informational transformation, transmission of knowledge, social capital, and psychosocial support perceived by the recipient as relevant to work, career or professional development. It usually entails informal communication, face-to-face -face, during a sustained period of time between a person who is perceived to have greater revelation or relevant knowledge, wisdom, or expertise. That person would be the mentor and the person who is perceived to have less information or knowledge or expertise. That person is considered the mentee or the protege. So, the contrast between mentoring and coaching is this. Mentoring is often about the mentor communicating their own experiences. Now, I want to just share with you just a little bit of history on that word because I thought the history of the word was very, very interesting. Now, the word mentor, again, is someone who teaches, gives advice, and helps help to a less experienced and often, not all the time, but often younger person. Now it comes from the Greek word mentor. It is taken from a book called Homer's Odyssey. Now the per there was a person named Mentor, okay? He was a friend of um, Odysseus, I believe it's Odysseus. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Odysseus was going out to fight in the Trojan War. He asked his friend Mentor to stay behind and to help up, help to raise and rear up his son while he was at war. And so Mentor took on the role of being like a surrogate father or guardian who advised the, his friend's son in the goal of preparing his friend's son 
to take on the responsibility of manhood in his father's absence. So that's where the word mentor comes from. And that's why mentorship is a very relational word. Now, coaching is, builds relationships too, but mentorship involves impartation. And that's where the difference comes in. And so mentors use personal context to help a mentee learn. They will often pull from their personal experiences and they will help to show the mentee or the protege how to, what to do and also how to do it. And that really is the difference between mentorship and coaching. Now, again, let's, let's circle back to what I said earlier before, when I first started talking. There's different types of mentorship. And this is something that I want to go over just to give you some clarity as you are, are praying and deciding what you want to do about my mentorship program. So just to kind of keep things really concise, I want to talk about two categories of mentorship. I want to talk about informal mentorship and formal men mentorship. Now this I like just just to be fun. I wanted to make it kind of fun. So I thought about cooking. So informal mentorship is like, you know, your grandmother who just cooks by memory. She just throws stuff in. She just, you know, she cooks by taste, by feel, you know, as opposed to a person, a formal mentorship is, is cooking by a recipe or baking. Baking is very precise. So just to kind of give you a mental picture of, of what we're going, how we're going to go through all of these definitions. So with informal mentorship, usually informal mentorship is mentorship that is unpaid. It's unpaid mentorship. These are mentorships that form just kind of naturally, like a happenstance kind of thing. And even going back to the word mentor itself, if you break it down in, in, in um, the root word, it actually means one who thinks one who advises, one who who uh, comes alongside with intent and purpose and passion to teach and instruct. So that right there tells you that there is a personal aspect to mentorship. And so an informal mentorship is kind of like what I had with my Chinese teacher. Or it shouldn't, it's not kind of, it is what it was with my Chinese teacher because I didn't pay her. I was a kid, you know, she was, she was my teacher, but that was an, an example of an informal mentorship. It wasn't something I was looking for. It wasn't something she was looking for. It was just our path crossed. Okay. Now I realize it's divine orchestration, but at the time I didn't understand that, but divinely our path crossed through this natural happenstance. And so we became, we took on that relationship where she was the wise woman in this specific area that I knew nothing about. Okay. And so I was the, I became just because I was her student, I also became her protege. And so that is, that's the kind of the definition of an informal mentorship It's very unstructured. It just kind of, it, it just happens organically. It's, it's can be long-term or ship. it can be short term, it can be lifelong, or it can be for a season, it can be, but it, but usually once it starts, you don't really know when it's going to end, it just kind of has to, kind of has to ride its course out, like for me, with, with my um, Chinese teacher, that relationship started in high school and went through most of my college years, and then things tapered off, not because anything bad happened, but because my life shifted, her life shifted, that season had ended. But that's an example of an unstructured, informal, unpaid mentorship. There's a mutual connection. There's something that draws both parties together. It's very personal, it's spontaneous in nature, and it's very flexible. I think most of us can say, honestly, that we've had at least one of those types of relationships in our lives, uh, whether it's a teacher, whether it's a coach from your sports team, whether it's one of your pastors at church, whether it's a boss at work or a peer-to-peer -peer mentor or a coworker, those natural progressive relationships where you are learning a great deal, but in a very organic, unstructured way. 
That's an example of an informal mentorship. And those are, are the, you know, equivalent to the grandmother, your old grandmother or your mature grandmother in the kitchen, just kind of cooking, just throwing spices in and just cooking by taste and by feel and by texture. And, and just from their experience, knowing what they need to add, what they need to take out, that kind of cooking by memory, cooking from your heart kind of mentorship. Now, we're going to go on to formal mentorship. Now, formal mentorship, may, although it's not the same, it is no less passionate and it's no less purposeful, okay? And it's kind of like cooking by recipe. Now, that is that is something that I did growing up. I loved cookbooks. I would find cookbooks and, you know, tag sales. My grandmother loved tag sales. So I would, I would go with her. But of course, my friends didn't know. As you know, it wasn't cool to go to tag sales when you're 15, 16, but I would sneak and go with her on Saturday mornings and I would always be fascinated by all these cookbooks that would be at the tag sale. So I would grab them or she grabbed them for me, I should say, and then I would cook from them. So I enjoyed cooking by recipe because they were recipes that I couldn't learn any other way because they were, they were dishes that were outside of my culture. So if I wanted to learn how to cook chicken corn on blue, I couldn't ask my mother. I had to go to the cookbook. So I enjoy looking at those recipes. Now, formal mentorship, that's where you that's where you get into paid mentorship. Why would you pay for a mentor? Well, here's why. One of the benefits of paid mentorship is that it is very structured. So you have an expert in a particular field or area that is engaged with you and they provide very specific, detailed direction based on a thorough understanding of where the mentee or the protege is, the subject matter or subjects, okay, and also where that mentee wants to be and all, all along with how to help them get there. So it's really, really direct. Whereas when you're in an informal mentorship relationship, Things kind of just evolve. You learn just through normal conversations, just through the fellowship, just really having a good time. And then in that process of enjoying each other's company, you're learning, you're engaging. Whereas formal mental sh- mentorship, you, you can enjoy yourself. I mean, hey, you want to laugh, have fun. It's great. And laughing facilitates learning because it helps to relax you and put your guard down. So you want to have a good time. But, but that is not the goal. That's the byproduct. The goal is to give that person a thorough understanding based on your expertise and your experience and share you're sharing advice and you share know-how just to help that mentee develop techniques based on how you did it that they can then either duplicate replicate or or alter in some way that they can then take on themselves and use to move forward now with structured formal mentorship the person that is the mentor, if they're taking that role seriously, they are going to be extremely prepared. They're going to be extremely researched. They're going to take time to study. They're going to take time to be organized. Some some of these mentorship programs, there's an actual curriculum. Um, they're going to be very systematic in how they approach because they're, their goal is to impart and in part very specifically. And so to do that, you have to have a plan. When you have a formal mentorship, you don't have that hodgepodge per se. There is some flexibility, but it's not as flexible, okay? And typically formal mentorships have a definite begin date and a definite end date. So there's a term, it's a term, program and it's time sensitive. It's specific in its focus and it's specific in its objectives. And so, and because of that, there has to be some sort of a structure. Now we need both. You need those relationships that, that organically evolve, that are divinely put into your life. And then you need those who are also the relationships, mentored, formal mentored relationships that are not only divinely placed into your life, but are more structured and more specific because each one of them serve a different purpose. And together you get a holistic 
whole person approach to mentorship. And so do you need to pay to have a mentor? No, but in certain areas, in certain fields in your life, in certain directions that you're going in, you usually will need to at some point move in that direction, especially if you are building a career, if you're walking in ministry, if you're trying to walk out your call, if you're trying to build an organization, so on and so forth. You you will need to kind of go in that direction because you want to make sure that you are covering all your bases. And sometimes in the informal structured mentorship relationship, you don't always get those real specific things that you might need in a more structured way. The mentorship program that I will be doing is going to be spiritual, spiritual, spiritually led and spiritually based. And so I'm relying on the Holy Spirit. And so, yes, it will be structured. Yes, it will have um, an outline or we're going to be following a certain pattern. But we will also give room for the Lord to move. And mentorship, although not mentioned, the word not that's not mentioned in Scripture the the definition of mentorship is is throughout the new testament you will see jesus and uh, his style of how he led his disciples and paul even says you know the very famous quote follow me or follow my example as i follow the example of christ and that he tells he tells the people that he's working with and ministering to he says to them he admonishes them he says whatever you have learned or received or heard from me put that into practice. And so that's that is that's what a mentorship relationship is. So you see a lot of examples of mentorships throughout relationships throughout the scripture. So I hope that you've gained some understanding on the difference between the two, the distinctions between coaching and mentorship, and also why this program is unique. I'm really excited about what is going to happen. It's going to be phenomenal. It really is. I'm, I mean, there's just a different anointing on me for this particular program. And um, I look forward to being able to impart even on a one-on-one -on -one basis with the, with the participants. I look forward to prophetically pouring into each person and just helping people to just clearly define their prophetic future and their prophetic destiny and really kind of going in and understanding what that means. I'm very excited, as you could tell. I'm extremely excited about this. This is this is something that will can open up in so many different directions and take you in so many different directions. All God needs for you is just to say yes. And if listening to me talk, the Holy Spirit is pricking you, if, if you, you're you sensing something stirring in you, if like um, Elizabeth, John and Elizabeth wound, when Mary came in and greeted Elizabeth and the baby within her, within her womb leaped at the greeting um, of Mary, um, if your baby, uh, you know, theoretically, if you're, or, or, you know, figure, figuratively, if your baby is leaping as you're listening to this and there's a stirring in you and there's an excitement that's coming, then that means that there's something going on in you and you need to explore it, not ignore it. And you need to trust God, trust God. There's been so many times where again, like I said in the beginning, where I just said, yes. <laughs> and then later on, I was like, hmm, so how am I paying for this again? Or how am I going to get here? Or how am I going to make this work? And the Holy Spirit always came with wisdom. Things always opened up, but just like you trusted God with that, yes, you've got to trust God with the rest.